We've owned this backhoe for years, and it's always run great, but it has never started well. In fact, we've basically always needed to use jumper cables to start it. Even if the battery was completely full, it would still need a jump to get going. We replaced the battery, the alternator, the terminals for the battery, as well as stripping the wire back a bit. So the only thing left in the starting loop is to replace the battery cables themselves. We start off here by removing the negative terminal from the battery and then removing the negative terminal from the first side of the shutoff switch. That is one wire and we're going to replace that single wire first. The space for this first nut was really tight so we ended up using a super long extension and laying under the machine to break it free. It's really easy from that upward angle. This video also includes how to replace the starter and the starter solenoid, so use the timestamps to jump ahead if you need to. Once the negative was free, we just pulled it out. Pretty, pretty good snake eye, mate. About a two-footer. <laughs> we got our new cables from Battery Cables USA, along with some heat shrink and some terminals. We got one 12-foot section with the positive and negative battery terminals already installed by them. Now we just need to cut it to length and then install a terminal on the other end. They sell solder plugs that go with these terminal ends, so you just heat them up with a torch and then plunge the end in there and it solders it. For a little bit of extra security, we went ahead and pressed them with the hydraulic press. And I throw a piece of heat shrink tubing on there. It's actually so fat that you can install it later on in the process and it doesn't matter. For this first one, I stripped a little bit too much cable off, and we also missed a few strands going in. Um, but no big deal, we just covered it up with some heat shrink. And then just to be safe, went ahead to the hydraulic press and just gave that a little bit of a flattening. Yeah, and just like that we have one of the three cables done. This goes from the negative on the battery to the battery disconnect switch. On the machine the battery cables run next to the radiator in that little gap there. This reassembles as battery cable, then lock washer, then the nut. We ended up just changing this single cable this weekend, so we put the battery terminal back on and fired it up, and then came back the next weekend to do the rest of the battery cables. The first thing we did the next weekend was fire the machine up, lift the bucket to the maximum height, and then pull out the pin and let down the loader lock that keeps the bucket up in the air. This gave us a little bit more room to work, which is really important for the other two cables. Now I remove the positive battery terminal. That extra wire there is the positive coming out of the alternator that charges the battery. Just set that one off to the side and then pull the terminal off. I wrestled the positive cable out, but the other end is still connected to the starter. That's a pain to remove, so next I go ahead and disconnect the negative that goes from the battery disconnect switch to the starter. The extra braided cable that you can see there is a ground. There's one that goes from the battery disconnect to the frame, and another that goes from the negative on the starter to the frame. Removing the negative from the starter is pretty easy, there's decent access. The negative is a threaded rod that sticks out from the motor on the tractor. This bolt and the nut and bolt directly above it are all that holds the starter to the tractor. The other side of this cable is connected to the battery disconnect switch. This one broke pretty easily by hand, didn't require a long extension from the bottom like on the other side. Once this side is disconnected, I can pull the cable out. The ground cables stay connected to the frame. Now comes the fun part, disconnecting the battery cable that goes to the top of the starter solenoid. To make it a little bit easier, we went ahead and disconnected the key or ignition switch located right here on the front. It's really hard to get 
much travel out of a socket, but you can fit one on that top post and slowly back it out. Loosening that nut up was a nightmare. Literally my ratchet got like one to two clicks per turn. That top bolt also has the positive that goes to the tractor's wiring harness. Here are the complete set of battery cables. There's one positive and a negative that is split into two to connect to the battery disconnect switch. The next cable I'm making here is the negative that goes from the battery disconnect to the starter. This one gets a ring terminal on both ends. I use the existing wire to cut the correct length on this one, and then whatever is left will be part of the positive cable. Same deal, drop in a solder plug, heat it up, and jam the wire in the hole. It's a little awkward to get the timing right if you're doing this solo. Definitely use two people if you got them. When you go to strip the wires for these ring terminals, you want to strip a little bit less than you think you need, and then they'll come out perfect. This one came out really clean, and the other two ended up with a little bit of extra exposed wire. The heat shrink that we got with these cables was awesome. It was super thick and it shrank down super well to keep our cables protected from the elements. The last cable is our positive and it just needs a single ring terminal and it'll be done. All the cables are complete, so I'm back at the tractor, and right now I'm feeding the positive cable back through the hole next to the radiator. Once you get the positive cable on the top post of the battery solenoid, make sure to also put the tractor positive harness back on that same bolt, and then put the nut on there and tighten it up. After some tightening, the cable was still wiggling a bit, so I decided to go back in and tighten it a bit more. Oh, fuck. Might have been hard to tell there, but the bolt sticking out of the starter solenoid snapped off, at which point... I now have to pull the starter out to replace the solenoid that I just broke. The good news is we've already disconnected the bottom nut here, which had the starter negative cable on it. The top bolt here needs to be undone, and it has the negative for the wiring harness on the tractor on it. Oh yeah. Yeah, it came right loose. Um, and the starter is about to fall off in my hand. So. We got a little ahead of ourselves here. We still need to take the fuel filter off. It was a real pain to try to get it off with the fuel filter wrench. Then we realized that there was a lock ring on the top preventing it from twisting. And thus, the reason it has that fucking ring. Yep. If your starter is still connected, you won't have to use a pry bar to lift it up. It took a lot of wiggling, but we eventually got it out. The solenoid is attached to the starter with three screws in a triangle pattern. Before you loosen all three of those up, you want to disconnect the cable that goes from the solenoid to the battery. Then when you do disconnect the solenoid screws, it's not still awkwardly attached by that other cable, and you easily have the leverage to break it free. When the replacement solenoid did arrive, we installed it, but for some reason it wasn't tightening down all the way. 
When we took it apart, we realized that the plunger was a different length in the replacement solenoid than in the original factory starter. So we tried swapping out the plunger from the old one to the new one. And when we reconnected it to the tractor, the starter ran all the time. Even without the key turned to the on position, the starter was running. So what we ended up having to do was replace the starter with a new unit complete with solenoid. There's the hole in the motor where the starter goes. When we set it in there, we want to set it on the threads on the bottom left post. To reinstall the starter, I pulled the dipstick out of the way, and then I put it in gear side first. I also tried to put it in with the power cable attached already, but it's in the way and you have to install it with no cables attached. Before putting the nut on the bottom starter bolt, we need to attach the ground cable and the negative battery lead. It's held on with a lock washer and a nut. Once that's tight, we can move on to the top bolt on the starter. This one's a through bolt that has a nut on the back. Somehow we managed to miss the shot of installing or tightening it. Make sure to install the negative that goes to the tractor's wiring harness on that top bolt. Now again, we reinstall the positive battery cable to the top post on the solenoid and the tractor's positive battery harness. The top post on the starter solenoid is a 13 millimeter. Make sure to tighten it cautiously so you don't snap it off like I did. The only thing left to install on the starter is the ignition switch. It's the only flat tab. Make sure to plug that back in. The other side of the disconnect switch gets the ground cable and then the negative cable that runs between the starter and the shutoff switch. Reinstall the lock washer and the nut and then tighten it down with a 17 millimeter. Back at the front of the tractor, I reinstalled the positive battery terminal and the positive coming from the alternator. Can you turn the switch the fuel pump around? Yeah, you don't want to do that. Yeah, that's why I was going to go buy a shoe for the lock Yeah. Mm. Now we need to reinstall the fuel filter. If you took your fuel filter off, might as well replace it with a fresh one. Make sure to fill the new one completely full to the top with diesel and then install the slip ring. When we tried to install the new fuel filter with the existing starter, there's this little post sticking out from it that was blocking the ring from fitting on the way up. So I took a grinder, ground it down shorter, and then it popped right in. Freedom! Make sure to spin the ring on the top of the fuel filter tight. If you did remove or replace your fuel filter, Turn your key on and let the system prime for 30 seconds before trying to fire it up. And just like that, we put the end to years of struggling and having to jumpstart this machine. It sat for over a month while we did this series of repairs, and then it fired up almost instantly there. That's all for this one. Make sure to lift the loader lock back up and put the cotter pin back in it. We'll see you next time our backhoe breaks.